Hi, this is Javier Chavez from Katif Technologies here, and I'm going to show you how you can create renderings of your designs just like the one shown here using display rendering in Autodesk Inventor. Now, we normally work with display settings that are optimized for designing and building 3D CAD models. However, today I'd like to demonstrate how simply by adjusting display settings in Inventor, we can go from this to a realistic marketing quality image like this. When it comes to rendering in Inventor, we have a couple options. We can utilize display settings, also known as display rendering, or we can utilize the Inventor Studio environment. Now, as you examine some of the features of these two options, you'll see that both can create still images. However, the display rendering can typically create these images much more quickly, and that's why I've chosen to focus on display rendering today. You'll also notice that Inventor Studio has a capability of creating both model and lighting animations, with the end result being a rendered video that can communicate aesthetics and function. We'll take a look at Inventor Studio in a separate video. For now, let's go ahead and start this process by working with visual styles and adding shadows and perspective to our model. Now, since we're going to work with display settings, it makes sense that we'll go to the View tab to change the appearance of our model. We'll begin by changing the visual style. As I mentioned before, our display settings are typically optimized to create 3D models by using less of your graphics resources. The current visual style, shaded with edges, is a good example of this. As we look at some of the other visual styles, you'll see other examples that help us model more effectively, such as wireframe style. However, you're also going to notice styles that give us the appearance of a watercolor rendering or hand-drawn sketch. But if your goal is to create more lifelike renderings, then you'll want to use the realistic visual style, which will incorporate higher quality shading and material textures. By far, this setting will make the biggest visual impact. Next, we'll go to the shadows pull down and activate all the shadows. Now you can also activate ground, object, and ambient shadows independently. For the appearance of depth, we'll also change our camera mode from orthographic to perspective so that we can visualize our model more like our human eye. To make our rendering more convincing, we'll need to assign materials and utilize a suitable light environment that will highlight the appearance of these materials. We'll start by isolating the side view mirrors. These were modeled as a glossy yellow to match the body. However, I'd like to change their appearance to a carbon fiber. It's important to note that we can accomplish this through either materials library or the appearance library. The difference being that the appearance library only applies visual properties, properties such as color, texture, bump maps, etc. And these can be applied to the entire part or to specific bodies or surfaces. In addition to changing the appearance, material properties also apply physical characteristics such as yield strength and thermal conductivity. However, they're applied to the entire part. In this example, we've selected the appropriate bodies or surfaces and we'll launch the appearance library. We can then enter keywords in the search window to find the appropriate appearance definition. Hovering over the results shows a preview on the geometry. And when you're ready to assign it, you can right click and choose assign a selection. We'll now go ahead and return to the assembly and examine more lighting styles to see how the lighting affects the appearance of our model. You'll notice that some of these lighting styles load an IBL, or image-based lighting environment, which means that the lighting parameters, such as location, luminance, come from a high dynamic range image, or photograph. If we go to the lighting styles pull down, we can go to the settings option at the bottom where we can view, edit, or create these lighting styles. You'll notice that many of these styles use image-based lighting. In some of these styles, we can actually display the source image so it can be used as a 3D background for our models. Notice now that we've applied a lighting style that displays the image, we can see the materials reflect this image. In fact, this particular lighting style shows a very dimly lit indoor environment. So instead, let's try another style that shows our model in an outdoor environment. And I think this one looks way better. At this point, we can now render and create images that will help extend our data beyond the engineering department to other parts of our organization, such as marketing. Now this model looks pretty good so far, However, to get the most accurate and realistic rendering, we can turn on ray tracing. And ray tracing is just the process of tracing the path of light and simulating the effects as the light encounters or bounces off other objects. This process is computationally intense, so it can take a little while for your workstation to process. At the bottom right, you'll notice you'll get a window that shows the progress. You can expand this window to control the quality and accuracy of your ray tracing. You'll notice that every time you change a view or edit the ray tracing settings, the process starts over. So you'll want to keep the model still and allow it to finish. Ideally, you'll want to allow Inventor to complete the ray tracing process. However, in this example, at a little over two minutes, I think I'll click the Save button in the ray tracing dialog and save the image to a location and format of my choice. 
Now, to save some time, you might choose to skip ray tracing. We can go ahead and disable and turn off the ray tracing. With ray tracing turned off, we can now go to the file pull down and save the image so that we can later compare the same image at the same resolution. It's important to note that the resolution on your graphics area of the screen is the resolution of the image in either result. So now let's take a quick look at these results. I think the three minutes or so it took to ray trace this image was well worth the time. If we take a closer look, we can see the image with ray tracing turned on shows the model more accurately, casting darker shadows in areas that should be darker. You'll also notice that the fender looks brighter on the ray traced image since there's more light directly above the surface. So here you have the end result of the fully ray traced image. Thank you for watching this video and look for more videos like this from Kativ Technologies. Thank you.